What is going on my peeps? Your boy Versatile is back with another video. Back with a video that I'm excited to finally share with you guys. And this is my OnePlus 7 Pro review. Yes, what a solid device, a solid phone. You know a phone is very good and is very competitive when it can battle through much of the strife that it has went through in terms of one particular area of the phone and that's the camera the phone holds much weight pun intended yes this phone holds so much value despite having a decent camera a camera is not a deal breaker in my opinion and so why not let's just tackle that part of the of the review first the aspect of the phone and that is the camera how solid is the camera the camera is decent it's good it gets the job done you could take the camera out you could take a picture and keep it moving let's be realistic most people take more than one photo at a time most people take one photo at a time i mean uh, take multiple photos at a time and what i mean by that is when they go to shoot a picture they line it up and they take about three four five pictures before they actually exit and they're out which means that regardless if you're taking a picture with the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Pixel 3a series or the 3, the Huawei P30 Pro, an iPhone, a Samsung device, you're always going to take multiple photos, which means that it kind of gives any phone proper leverage to take a good picture, no matter how many shots you take. And with the OnePlus 7 Pro, regardless if you take it with its wide angle camera, the main shooter, or the telephoto lens, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get a good photo out of this camera, or out of these sets of cameras. So this is at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Thought I'd stop by a nearby school to kind of had the most poppiest of flowers and trees out here, so I thought I'd come out here and kind of show you guys some of that. Very saturated, and I like that. Stabilization's pretty solid. And this is the front facing camera. Woo! As you guys see, stabilization's pretty solid. You guys see as I walk backwards, that same tree I was just at. Oof. Pretty solid. OnePlus's video capabilities, A-OK. -okay. The front facing camera likewise, not a bad deal. It hides itself. I haven't had no issues with the pop-up camera except for one time and that's because it must have thought I was trying to get into my phone from my pocket. And so as the case is having face unlock enabled on here, the camera popped up in my pocket, but it, it didn't do anything to the phone. It was solid. So to really try to hold this to the fire does not do the rest of the phone justice. And what do I mean by the rest of the phone? Well, the next most cr uh, crucial part of a phone and the experience of the phone is the software. Oxygen OS is a flat out monster. Not only is it fluid and it's smooth, it's fast and it has customization that frankly other phones don't give you or it's too cluttered to find. Case in point, Samsung. As much as I love their phones and their customization features, it is a bad rainy day when you're trying to find specific features in Samsung settings because it's too all over the place. I, w I did have a video about it. I wish they would just centralize all of their features in like one location. With the OnePlus, the features that you look for while you're in that location, they're there. It's a little, it's, it's different and I'm okay with that. If you go on the display, anything that has to do with the display and whatnot, it's right there under display. Your utilities or you know, other functions of the phone that you want to play with, such as like the gaming mode, Fnatic mode or Fnatic mode, however you want to pronounce it, DC dimming and the like, although you don't have that on the T-Mobile variant. Utilities has all the other crucial things that you're looking for 
from this phone. Anything fingerprint related is going to be in security under fingerprint. OnePlus did a great job of organizing their settings menu and giving you dark mode right off the bat in a true dark mode without having to wait for Android Q. Brings the software value of this phone much higher than any other phone. OnePlus seems like they've been known for their hardware to or their software to be solid. Coming from Cyanogen Mod up evolving in the Oxygen OS, Oxygen OS is a breath of fresh air. Now, if we switch it up and you get down with it, what other experience are you enjoying on this phone? The rest of the hardware. 6.67 inches is tall. It is a big phone, but you get used to it. And the reason why you get used to it is most likely you've dealt with other big phones before. And because you get a full display with no notch, no punch hole, you get a full top to bottom display, you enjoy using the phone. The display is clean, QHD plus, or in other words, quad HD. You get 90 Hertz. Now, some people say they don't necessarily see it and it is hard to replicate via, you know, <laughs> footage because you have to see it in person. What provides the software to be so smooth, flush and, and fluid and fast is a 90 hertz display. Now, yes, there are some apps that are listed or whitelisted as they say to run 60 hertz and XDA developers has a page where you can force 90 hertz on everything and I hope that OnePlus may utilize that in the future. But in general, regardless if it's 60 or 90, you notice the 90 and you kind of notice when it's not 90, but you still notice that it's still overall very smooth and that's how Oxygen, Oxygen OS is. It's a complete unibody experience in terms of hardware and software. They, they made the software for the hardware and it has been paying off. As I said, you get glass on, well, I'm saying it now, you get glass and on um, front and back, Gorilla Glass 5, which is okay. Gorilla Glass 6 is the newer, the newer thing. And of course, with OnePlus increasing the price and calling it a pro, yes, I do expect them to have Gorilla Glass 6. But I'm also not mad at Gorilla Glass 5 because I have I've had Gorilla Glass 5 phones such as I believe the Pixel 2. They might have had Gorilla Glass 4, but I think they had Gorilla Glass 5. And the 10R had Gorilla Glass 5. No issues. So until I have issues with something, I can't necessarily complain about it. But being that it's, this is the OnePlus 7 Pro, not the OnePlus 7, I would have liked, of course, seeing Gorilla Glass 6 on here for the added protection and durability of the device. The fingerprint sensor, fast, clean, smooth. I watched Lou's video, I do notice a slight difference and, it, and like he said, it might be a mind over reality, reality over mind perspective on eliminating the fingerprint sensor, uh, you know, transition. I eliminated it, it does feel a little faster, I'm not even gonna lie. When I, you know, tap the screen, as soon as it comes alive, I guess it doesn't want to. Boom, I'm in. Now if I close it, I hit it now, and okay. So it wants to be picky a little bit. So sorry, I could, uh, you know, but you still see it's very fast in terms of fingerprint sensor. And the display is just beautiful. Like at the end of the day, you keep coming back to the display because it is that nice. The display is that nice. This frame is clean, it's fine. Pop-up camera. Flush is gone, it's solid, and it has not gotten in the way. Mine has not collected a lot of lint or anything like that because I rarely use it. So, and if I do, it's not in my pocket. So the only way it's gonna really collect anything is if it's out often, or if you have it in a space where it's gonna collect that and it pops out. And to, you know, like I said, I've only really had one or two occasions where it popped out of my pocket and even then I didn't have anything wrong with the camera module. So in terms of the software and the hardware on this device, super, super solid. Now to run all of this good, pure experience of a OnePlus 7 Pro, you get a nice, decent sized battery. I won't even say decent size, it's a great size battery and 4,000 milliamps. I use this phone quite often. I'll run through 10 hour days of work, which, which really means I won't actually get on a charger for 11 to 12 hours. It will survive all 11 to 12 hours in a congested network area where it's continuously searching for signal. And even if it does have signal, 
social media. Uh, and if I'm at home, watching YouTube videos on it, or just watching videos in general, surfing the web, browsing, taking care of you know business in terms of the Creator Studio app and whatnot. This guy easily gets me through the day. From morning until nighttime, I won't have to put this on the charger. And for me, I rock the settings at QHD Plus and I rock the settings at 90 Hertz all the time. No auto switching, no 60 Hertz, no sometimes here that, no. I rock this phone maxed out to get the best that I wanna see because that's my right to do so. They gave me that ability. I'm gonna rock this phone out the way it needs to be and the battery has not let me down. Easily get a day's worth of time out of this. Easily get six hours plus screen on time. Every time I take this off the charger <clears throat> and the charger is no big deal because you get warp charge where it charges off for 30 watts and this sucker will charge from zero to 100 in like an hour, just over an hour. And if you have any juice, like, you know, 15, 20, 30%, you'll be charged up in about 45 minutes. 40, 45 minutes to 100%. So some people squabble about wireless charging. You guys have seen me drop videos about wireless charging. It's not a big deal right now. It's not a need. It's a great want, not a need. And I trust that OnePlus is going to come through solid on wireless charging when they do integrate it into their OnePlus phones. But for the Pro, I, I again, I still wasn't necessarily expecting wireless charging because they have not built that up themselves. So why would we get hyped over wireless charge? We hear Pro, does Pro really mean anything anymore? It's a good question seeing as OnePlus dropped a Pro and there's some features that could have been upgraded to Pro level status, just like we've seen with the MacBook Pros failing or being recalled or not giving you proper render times if you're doing video editing and, and production. The Mac Pro lives up to the Pro name, of course. That most definitely lives to the Mac Pro, to, to, to the Pro moniker. But we see Pros kind of being overused or being used as a selling point. And although you're still getting great features like the 90 hertz display is Pro level, the whole phone in its entirety could be more Pro. But I'm satisfied and happy with what is here in the OnePlus 7 Pro. You get a great experience at a very competitive price. Starting at 669. You won't go wrong getting six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and the 700 model has eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, and the $749 model has eight gig or 12 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of storage. So you're getting plenty of storage at any price point. You're still getting more, in my opinion, uh, your money's worth than you would spending $750 on, say, the Galaxy S10e. This is the $700 model, eight gigs. 256 gigs of storage. You're getting a ton of value at $700 that a lot of companies can't offer even at the eight to $900 range. And the OnePlus did a solid job with the price of this phone and what you get. That's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I took my time with the review because I wanted to, of course, explore all aspects of it. I've dropped camera videos on it. I've dropped updates for it. I got a T-Mobile variant, so I've had to patiently wait an extra week or so for certain updates. But I decided I want to patiently vet, it, vet out the phone because we know that phones aren't ready day one and companies need about a month to really send out the juicy updates that actually bring the phone to what they actually wanted it to be. And so I gave OnePlus its justice in doing so. And I'm glad I did because I could give you a fleshed out review on the OnePlus 7 Pro after using it for over a month and a half now. Using it thoroughly, using it as my daily driver, taking several pictures with the phone, running it through its paces, everything. I'm thoroughly satisfied with this phone and I, I hope you guys get to enjoy and ex uh, the experience as well. So your boy Versatile is signing out and until the next video, Woo! wait for it.